Hello, everyone, and welcome to another data project. Today, we have an exciting project on tap. We're actually going to be looking at a machine learning project, but in multiple parts. So today, we're actually going to do the web scraping part. And it's on a topic that's actually really interesting. We're going to try to predict who is going to be the MVP in a given NBA season. And to do that, we need a lot of data on NBA players and their statistics. So in this first part of the project, we're gonna be doing web scraping to actually get that data. And we're gonna walk through an end-to-end -end web scraping project where we scrape multiple types of data and we load it into pandas for easy analysis. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump over to JupyterLab. And this is the interface that we'll be using for our coding today. So if you're familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab enables you to open notebooks and run them. So if you're following along at home, feel free to either use Jupyter Lab or a Jupyter Notebook. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the data we wanna get. So I mentioned we're gonna try to predict who the NBA MVP is going to be. To do that, we need data on who the MVPs were each season as well as stats for each player for each season that we want to make predictions for. So to do that, we will turn to a site called Basketball Reference. So Basketball Reference is an amazing site. They have lots of statistics on the NBA from the very beginning to the present, and their data is in a really structured and just well-formatted way that makes it easy for us to scrape and download. So a note about web scraping, in general, you can scrape on the web, but just be careful about how you are making requests to websites. Try not to make too many requests, save the data when you can, and that's what we're gonna do here so we're not overloading the basketball reference website. We're gonna try to only take data from a few pages. So this is the base website. We'll actually need to get data from three different types of pages, and we'll go, we'll go through them one by one. So the first type of page is this page. This page has data on the most valuable player for each season. And this is for the 2020 to 21 season. And it shows you the winner who is Nikola Jokic. He had 971 points out of a possible 1,010. So he actually won the MVP award. And then you have the second, third, fourth, fifth place and so on. If you look at this URL up here by changing the URL, we can get stats from different seasons. So this is the same type of table, but for the 2019 to 2020 NBA season. And we can see the votes. Giannis Antetokounmpo actually won this year with 962 points. And then LeBron James, James Harden, etc. So we're actually going to get data for about 20 years. So we'll get data all the way back to 1991. And we'll get data for the past season because the current season hasn't finished yet, so we don't have the MVP votes yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, but I wanted to show you the structure of the data. It's usually a great idea when you're doing a web scraping project to first just look at the actual pages you wanna scrape, make sure you understand the structure of the data. And a really nice way to do that is to use the page inspector. So we just opened up the inspector and you can see that using this, you can actually see the HTML of the page. And when you highlight different elements, you can see what they correspond to. So you can see here, uh, let's open this up. There's actually this table and this table has all of the data we want. So our goal is going to be to download this whole page and then extract this specific table because this has the MVP voting. And that's what we're gonna use to create our training data eventually for a machine learning model. So just keep that in mind and we will go ahead and start coding now. So let me jump back to my notebook here and let's start coding. All right, so the first thing we need to do is install a few libraries. So we're gonna install the request library first. And this is the library that lets us download web pages. So I'll go ahead and install this. Uh, if you put the exclamation mark before a command in Jupyter Notebook, it actually runs it on the command line. In this case, I already had requests installed. I'll go ahead and delete this cell, but just in case you need it, I wanted to show you how to do that. The next thing we'll do is we'll define the years we want to scrape data for. So let's, let's create a range from 1991 to 2022. 
Now, the range function in Python is non-inclusive of the last year. So this will actually give us all the years between 1991 and 2021. And then uh, we'll just force this to execute and turn into a list so we can see it. So we'll see what's in years. And you can see it is a list with all of the years between 1991 and 2021. I'll go ahead and delete this cell because that's a lot of output and I don't want to keep scrolling past it. So now we can, we saw what the URL was. Hopefully you caught that, but now we can define the URL that we want to scrape. So this was the URL of that uh, awards voting page that we were looking at. You notice I replaced the year with these brackets. Uh, this will let us basically replace this URL with each year that we want to scrape data for when we're, when we're actually doing our web scraping. So now what we're going to do is iterate through the years. We're going to create our URL for that specific year. Actually, let's just call this URL start so we don't get confused. So our URL for a specific year is just going to be URL start format year. And what this does is just replace these brackets with a specific year. And we're iterating through all of the years. So it'll start with 1991 and then replace this with 1991, then 1992 and so on until we iterate through all of the years. Then we need to import requests because requests is how we're going to actually make a request to the website to download the web page. And then what we can do is say data is request.get URL. So the first time through this loop, this will be for the web page awards underscore 1991. And then we will actually download that website, which is amazing. That's a lot of work we've done in just a few lines of code. So once we have the data, actually, let me get rid of this loop and let's just assign 1991 to year so you can see what's actually happening. So let's take a look at data. And then with the request library, the dot text property is the actual HTML of the page. So you can see it actually downloaded the website and I'm not gonna scroll through all of that messy HTML right now, but that actually downloaded the website, the, the page for 1991. So I'll get rid of this and let's put our for loop back in. So we have the data, now we need to actually save the data somewhere. So I'm gonna go to my handy interface in JupyterLab and create a folder called MVPs. And we'll actually just store our files in this folder. I'll actually call this MVP. And I can go ahead and actually name this notebook. I'll call this web scraping. And I will close this file interface. So now what we can do is we can save all the web pages into that MVPs folder. So what we're gonna do is inside the loop, we're gonna open up a file. Again, I'll use these brackets because I wanna replace it with the year. So that will actually create a new file uh, for each year and it'll just be named the year.html. And I'm gonna open it in write mode. W plus means that it opens the file in write mode and if the file already exists, it'll just overwrite, it, which is exactly what we want because we're creating new files. Uh, and then we call this F. So we're opening the file as F and then we can refer to the file with the F variable. So we're gonna write the HTML to that file. So let me run this loop and it'll go ahead and save those files as HTML in that folder I created. And it's nice to actually save those files because when you're actually parsing the files, you don't wanna to have to re-download them every time. As I mentioned, that creates another request to the basketball reference site. You generally wanna minimize how many requests you're making to a site when you're web scraping. Now we have files, one for each year. And if we click on them, we can see that they have all of the HTML that we need. So the table is here with all of the MVP voting. Let's just check another random year and verify. You can see that uh, we now have everything we need to actually extract that table. So let's go ahead and take a, another look at this table just, just so you can see it. I'll do inspect again, and you can see that this table is the one we want. It has all the MVP votes and the stats, and it's this one down here in the inspector. It's the one called sortable stats table with the ID of MVP. And I'll talk a little, we'll talk a little bit about what those IDs and classes mean and how to actually extract the table. But I just wanted to show you that in the HTML files, the table is actually there. So the next thing we want to do is actually extract 
the data in the table from each HTML file. So to do that, we're gonna use a library called Beautiful Soup. And this is a really common library used in Python to actually parse web pages. I just showed you the command to install it. I already had it installed, but in case you didn't, so I'll just get rid of that cell. And then if we're gonna import it, we say from BS4 import Beautiful Soup. And that imports the parser class from Beautiful Soup, the one that we'll need. All right, so let, let me just show you an example of parsing a single page before we parse them all together. So let's open one of our files that we just saved. So we'll open the 1991 MVPs. You'll notice that I didn't pass in W plus because I wanna open it in read mode. So I open the file and then page is f.read. So page is just gonna be that HTML that I showed you before, but as a string. So we now have our HTML in a string and I'll run that. And we can, we can now start to parse this with beautiful soup. So we've read in our HTML data and then let's, let's actually initialize our beautiful soup. So what we say is we initialize the beautiful soup class and then we pass in the, the page string and we say we want to use an HTML parser. So this will actually create a parser class that we can then use to extract that table from the page. So what we want to do is the first thing we want to do is get rid of some of the stuff in here. So we'll go back to our inspector. So this top row in the table, yeah, this thing called over header, we actually don't need it. It's, it says voting per game shooting advanced. When we actually load this data into pandas, which is our ultimate goal, that's just gonna create an extra header row that we don't need. So let's go ahead and actually remove that from the HTML before we go ahead and load it into pandas. So what we'll do is actually find that specific row. So it's, it's an element. So this is an HTML element uh, with the TR tag. So we're gonna tell beautiful soup to find the TR tag. And then this specific TR tag has a class called overheader. So that's how you identify this uniquely. You say, hey, we wanna find all of the TRs, that's a table row, with the class overheader. And then we wanna remove that overheader. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna tell beautiful soup to find everything with every tag called TR and with the class overheader. So that will basically ask Beautiful Soup to find that row, and then we're gonna remove it because we don't want it to mess up our, our load into pandas and add an extra header row. So let's go ahead and remove that. And this decompose method allows you to actually remove elements that you find. So we find this element in the HTML, and then we use decompose to remove it. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we don't care about the rest of this page. We only want this table because that's what we're gonna pass into pandas. So let's, let's actually remove all the other stuff and we'll do that by only finding the specific table that we want. And you'll remember from before, this table had an ID. This table had the ID MVP. So an ID in HTML is a globally unique property that only one element can have. Well, more elements can have it, but you're not supposed to. So if you're ever writing HTML, don't reuse your IDs. So this enables us to find this and only this table. And we'll go ahead and do that with Beautiful Soup. Actually, I just use find here. So let's run that. And you see that actually just returns this single table, the most valuable player table. And we'll go ahead and assign that out to a variable. We'll call it MVP table. Very, uh, very unique variable name here. All right, and now the super cool thing is pandas can actually read HTML tables. So now that we've found this single table, let's go ahead and actually read it into pandas. And if you haven't installed pandas, you can, you can do the same uh, trick I showed you to just install pandas. Let's go ahead and run that. And then let's actually just uh, read this into pandas. All right. All right, one thing we do need to do is by default, this MVP table is not a string and we need it to be a string when we pass it into pandas. So we'll just convert that to a string. And then let's go ahead and take a look at MVP 1991. 
All right, so this is actually not a data frame, but this is a list of data frames. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and only take the first element there. And then now we actually have a data frame. So sweet, we have parsed the 1991 HTML page for the MVPs. We've pulled out a single table and then we've gone ahead and loaded it into pandas, which is amazing. We now have all the data we need in pandas. Now we just need to do it for the other seasons. So let me show you how to do that. So the way we do that is actually with a loop. So let's, let's say for a year in years, we're gonna go back and actually pull out our code to read a single page, but we're gonna modify it to work for multiple pages. And we'll just do that by using format. So each time you go through this loop, it'll read a different file. And then we just need to pull out our, our parsing code from before. So we, we wanna do this. I'll just copy and paste here instead of uh, typing again. We'll have to remove the, the same thing. And this is actually a really nice thing to do when you're parsing. If you're trying to parse multiple pages, test out your approach on one page and then scale it up to multiple pages. So here we're, we're just opening the file. We're doing the same parsing we were before to get the table. And then we'll load it into pandas again, doing the same thing. And what we want to do at the end is we just want to put this back into into some sort of list. So we, we have one data frame for each year. And at the end, what we're going to want to do is combine all of these data frames. So let's, let's put them all into this list, and then we'll actually combine all the data frames in the list. Let's run this. This might take a little bit. But if we look at DFs, it's now a list of data frames, one for each year. So we obviously don't want to work with a list of data frames. We actually just want to work with one data frame. So let's actually just use the pandas concatenate function to combine all of these data frames into one. And let's take a look at MVPs. So we'll look at the first few rows. We can look at the last few rows as well. And we see that in our last few rows, we have data as well. One problem we're running into here, there's no way to tell which year data came from. So we actually need to create a column called year. And this will help us disambiguate which year each player's statistics are from and uh, MVP award voting because we don't want just a big list of players without any, any way to map them to different years because that'll be really important later. So now we have a year column and you can see that we can actually tell which, which year the, the data came from. That's really important to keep in mind when you're scraping multiple pages and combining them. You need some way to tell which page each piece of information came from. So we now have the year column at the end. All right, so we parsed the MVP data and we now have one data frame with all of our MVP voting from all of the years from 1991 to 2021. Very cool. We combined data from a bunch of different web pages into one nice pandas data frame. So we'll now just store that data frame in CSV format so that we can load it in later and work with it. We now have a CSV file that shows you the MVP voting for each year. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is it's not enough to just have the MVP vote. If we're trying to predict who is going to be MVP, we need statistics for all of the players. Because if you wanna predict within the season or towards the end of the season, who's gonna win MVP, you need to look at all of the players and be able to say, okay, are their statistics MVP worthy or not? So what we need to get is all of the player stats from 1991 to 2021. And then what we'll be able to do is map the MVP votes onto the, the, that data and train a machine learning model. So now we need to get all of the player data. You'll notice that right now we only have the data for the people who won MVP. All right, so our next step is to look at this player stats URL. So let's go ahead and jump over there. This is the URL where we can get player stats. And these are per game stats. So for every player in the NBA, it shows you in each game, averaged across each game they played in in a season, how they do. So we have games, games started, minutes played, field goals, field goals attempted, etc., all the way through to points and personal fouls. 
So we want to actually grab this table. And we can do the same thing we did with URLs before. So if you change this to 2020, it gives you the previous one. If you change it to 20, 2019, you'd get the previous season, etc. So we can do something very similar to what we did last time. The only hiccup here is it may not be obvious, but this table does not actually completely load when you first see it. It uses JavaScript to load the entire table. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll jump back to the notebook and we will see what I'm talking about. All right, so the player stats URL is going to look like this. It's gonna look like this. And again, we'll just be replacing these brackets with whatever year we're using, using format. So let's actually try to download data for a single year. So for 1991. And then let's actually get that and see what it looks like. And let's write it to file. I'll just, I won't, I won't use format here because we're just using 1991. So this will download the player stats for 1991 and write it to a file. I will just go ahead and create a folder called player. So we put it in, in that folder. So let's run this and yes, messed up there. So now we can look in the player folder and, and see this. So if you go to this player per game stats, if we look here, we only see 17 rows. But if we go here and look at the 1991 stats, on the actual page, we'll see there's a lot more than 17 rows. There's, there's hundreds of rows of player data. And the reason for this is what I, what I was mentioning. This actually uses JavaScript to render the rest of the rows after the page loaded, which is really annoying because requests basically sends a request to the web server and says, give me this web page. It sends the data back. But it's assuming in this case that your web browser renders the web page and then runs the JavaScript in the page to download the rest of the rows. But that's not happening here because we just used requests to get the, get the page and we're not rendering it in a browser so it can actually get the rest of the rows. So we need to figure out a way to use a browser to actually get this data. This is a really common problem with web scraping. A lot of websites will have JavaScript or other components that they need, they need you to run on the client side in a browser to actually get the full data. So we're gonna to need to actually figure out a way around this. And the way we can do it is to, to use something called Selenium. So just pip install Selenium. So I'll run that. I already had it installed, but in case you didn't, and then what we need to do is actually install a driver as well. And which driver you install will vary based on your OS version. But you go to this web page to actually find the driver and download it. So you, you need to check your Chrome version, which you can check by hitting Chrome at the top left and then about Google Chrome. Uh, if you're using a different browser, you'll have to find out a different way to actually do this. Uh, this driver will actually enable Python to automate your browser. So it's actually downloading the web page in the browser and rendering it using the browser's JavaScript execution environment. So you wanna match your version and then go ahead and download. This will give you an executable file. I use Mac and there's one extra step you need to take on Mac. You need to actually run this. So it's this command. Use this at your own risk. This file is untrusted, which means that it hasn't been signed for security by through Apple's signing mechanism. Just so you know, every developer who develops apps for Apple has to sign their program using a signing keys, which just verifies that that developer actually created the program and that it's trusted. For the Chrome driver, that is not the case. So whether or not you wanna run this command is up to you, but this circumvents the check that Mac OS does for 
<laughs> for that signing key. So you would you would just do uh, you would just add the path to the Chrome driver executable here. All right. So I'm going to assume you've downloaded that file and put it in a place. And if you're on if you're on a Mac like I am, you've run that command. Before you initialize the driver, you actually need to import it. So from Selenium, import web driver. So then we can actually initialize the driver. And this is basically saying initialize the Chrome driver, but you need to specify where the driver is. So on my computer, it's in my, my home folder at Chrome driver. But wherever you put the executable file, you just want to pass in as the path here. So we hit run and that'll actually create a driver. And the driver enables us to automate the browser, which is super cool. Executable path. So I'll run that. All right, so you can't see it, but on my machine, this actually created a new Chrome window and that's the Chrome window that's being controlled by Selenium. So we can actually write code that tells the browser to go to different websites and do different things and then we can grab the HTML. So in this case, what we'll do is actually use that browser to render the page with all of the, all of the rows that we need and then we'll just grab the HTML of that page. All right, so the way we do that is again, we're just gonna, let's, let's do an example just for 1991. So we'll say year is 1991 and we'll do this just for 1991. Then we'll go ahead and tell, tell the driver to go, to go get that URL, render that URL in the browser. And then we're gonna run a little bit of JavaScript in the browser, which we can do through execute script. And this just tells the window.scroll to is a JavaScript command that just tells the browser to scroll down. And this will actually render that table for us because it's scrolling down and, and executing that, the, the JavaScript to render the rest of the table. And then we'll import uh, the time library. So we can put in a little sleep here to wait for the browser to execute the JavaScript. All right, and then what we can do is grab the, the data, the HTML, by saying driver dot page source. So let's run that and actually see what happens. That did not spell import correctly. So HTML, you can see that it grabbed a bunch of HTML. This isn't gonna look like anything to you yet, but we'll actually go ahead and write it to a file and then we can actually open it and see what's in it. HTML. All right, and we'll open this in write mode because we want to write to it. And then we'll just say f.write HTML. So let's see, let's see what happens here. All right, so we, we have this file, which we'll open. Yep, so now the 1991.html file has more than 17 rows. It has all of the rows. And that's because we executed the JavaScript. So we now have all of the player stats that we need for the 1991 season. And then we'll just go ahead and do that for the rest of the seasons. And I'll just copy and paste this code so we can create a loop to actually do this more easily. So we'll say for year in years, we'll do all this stuff and then we'll just write to a file. Okay, so if I run this loop, this will download all of the, the pages from 1991 to 2021. Let's go ahead and run this. It'll take a little bit because it actually has to, to tell a browser to do all these commands and to download the data from the browser. Let's actually take a look at this 1991.html and see what we need to extract from here. All right, so let's take a look at this table. All right, so in our inspector, we can see that this table has the ID of per game stats. So that's how we can actually pull out this data that we need. But this table is a little wacky. It, it, it repeats the row headers, which we don't want because that'll, that'll just be very confusing when we load the data into Python. So we can take a look at these, row, these rows and you can see there are table rows, TRs, with the class tHead. So we're actually gonna use the same thing we did earlier, the decompose method to actually remove those rows. So we wanna get the table with the ID per game stats and we wanna remove all of these extra TRs. So that, that's what we'll do next. Let's go back and see if this finished, still running. We can actually just check by how many files are in here, how close it is to done. Looks like it's up to 2017, so it should be done pretty soon. All right, and then let's go ahead and actually write the next step. 
So for the next step, we want to open our player files. And it may seem a little bit inefficient to, to write things to HTML and then immediately load them. Whenever I do any web scraping, I like to save things to a file immediately because it means that you don't need to keep scraping the site over and over. You don't want to go back and have to scrape a site over and over because it's, it, it's more load on the site. It also gives you a higher chance that the site might ban you. Not all sites are, are well set up for web scraping. All right. So we'll go ahead and open this file and then we'll assign it to the variable page. And let's, uh, let's set year to be 1991 right now. Just, just doing a quick walkthrough of how we can parse this page. And then I'll just go ahead and copy the previous parsing code because it's, it's not gonna be super different. And we'll just make some modifications. So we're first gonna initialize beautiful soup on our page. This is a, a string with the HTML of the page. Then we're gonna get rid of the rows. This was from the MVP. So we don't wanna remove the ones, those ones. We wanna remove a different one. So these are TRs with the class T head. So class T head, we wanna remove those. Then we, these are called per game stats. So we'll assign this to player table. Then we're gonna read it into pandas, read the HTML of the table into pandas. And then finally, we are going to assign the year. So let's go ahead and run this. Take a look at it. So awesome, we now have our player data for the 1991 season in this table. So let's just turn this into a loop like we did before. And we again wanna concatenate our data frames so just do that. And at the end, we will just have a list of data frames and then we can again concatenate it doing the same thing we did before. Yeah, I just had a variable named incorrectly. We'll run this. It just takes a little while because it takes a while to parse through HTML. But once that's finished running, we can run this to just concatenate all of the data frames together into one big data frame with all of the player stats. And that'll make it really easy for us to do machine learning later. All right, so let's run this. And let's take a look at players. Got the first few rows. Just get rid of this. We can look at the last few rows as well. And we'll see, we see we have player data from 1991 through 2021 in the same data frame. And that's a lot of rows, 18,000 rows and 31 columns in this data frame. So let's go ahead and write this to CSV also. So we can load it in and analyze it later. Okay, so we went from 20 pages of player data that was messy and required JavaScript to actually render properly to this table of 18,000 rows that has all the player data from 1991 to 2021. And each row in this data frame is a single player for a single season, and it has their average per game statistics. All right. So the final thing that we need to actually make predictions is team record matters a lot for the MVP race. So when we're predicting who's gonna win MVP, we wanna make sure that we insert the record of their team. So the machine learning model can see that record and use it as a predictor. So the final thing we'll need to scrape is the team records per year. And we will follow a very similar process to actually do this. Let me go ahead and show you what the team records look like. It's, it's these league pages, leagues, NBA, year, underscore standings. And what we want are the conference standings or the division standings. Conference standings actually load through JavaScript and we actually will just grab the division standings, which we can get through request.get, which is just a little bit faster and easier to use. So we'll actually grab the division standings. And what we'll do is we actually need to grab two tables. 
So there's, there's not one place with all the standings we need. There is this place, but the problem here is we would have to do additional parsing to actually extract the record because the record isn't stored as wins and losses, it's stored as overall. So if, if we actually use this, we would need to do some extra data processing in pandas in order to actually convert this to something usable. So it's up to you which method you wanna use. If you take the division standings, you get nice separate win-loss columns, but you need to do additional processing while you're scraping. But if you do this, you need to do some additional data cleaning when you're actually extracting the records. I will actually get the division standings because I wanna show you some more advanced web scraping and how we can combine multiple tables that we're scraping on a single page. So I'll actually grab the division standings. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we'll again, just go ahead and look at a demo of a single year. Our year will be 1991. So our team, oh, I did not assign a variable called team stats URL. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the URL is just the standings URL. And again, this is where you would place the year where these brackets are. So let's go ahead and grab this. So we have the team stats URL, and then we can do request.get, just the easier way to do this to grab the data in that URL, and we can write it to a file. This closing bracket, all right. And then we'll just write the HTML to this one. And then I'll go ahead and create this team folder. And then we can run this. All right, and then in team, we should now have an HTML file. So we now have our HTML. You can see it only grabbed the division standings. It didn't grab the expanded or the conference. If you wanted those, you would have to, you'd have to again use Selenium and, and do some browser automation. But we do have the division standings and we can actually go ahead and just, just scrape these. So we can just convert this to a loop for year and years. Run this so that we get the data for each year, which you can see populate on the left. So we're almost through. It's request using request.get is a lot faster than uh, having to use the browser to actually get the URL and then grab the page source from the browser. So it's, it's nice to use request.get when you can, but it's not always possible in, with web scraping. All right, so we now have all of our team data. The next thing we need to do is what we did before. We need to process that data to extract the tables that we want. So if we take a look at here, we can take a look at what we want and we can see that there are actually two tables that we need to think about. So the first one is this division standings E and then there's a division standings W as well. So we'll need to go ahead and scrape both tables and then we'll need to actually combine all of the data together. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll, we'll again just do this to open up the file. So that just opens up the team file and our first year we'll just assign to be 1991. And then what we need to do is just parse both tables. So I'll go ahead and just copy this code down so I'm not typing out everything again. And we've seen this code a couple of times, so you should, you should know what it does at this point. But we'll keep in that T head decompose because we want to remove, so you want to remove this thing that says Atlantic division, this thing that says central division, and those are just table rows with the class T head. So we'll just go ahead and remove those using decompose again. But we do need to change the name of our table. So we will use this ID, div standings E. And we need, to, we need to add an extra column here. I'll call this, I'll just change some of the names before I do that. But remember how when you're web scraping, you need to make sure that you store information for each page that you're scraping. So if you're scraping a page on a specific year and that year isn't in a table, you need to add it in. Also not in this table is specific data on the team name. So let's, let's go back to just look at this one. You'll see here that this, 
this team name here is named Eastern Conference and the team name here is named Western Conference. So we need to just standardize that and combine them into one column called team name. So we just need to go ahead and do that. Team, I'm just going to call team. Eastern Conference. So we'll just go ahead and assign whatever's in that Eastern Conference column to the team column. So we have a standardized column across both data frames. All right, and then we wanna parse that second table as well, which we can just do by changing to division standings W and then changing this to Western Conference. All right, and then again, we, we just wanna set up a loop here. and get a list of data frames. So we'll again just do four year and years, and we'll go ahead and do all this stuff in that loop. So that'll, that should parse all of our pages. And then we can again just use the concatenate function to concatenate all these data frames into one. And then let's take a look at it. Ah, one thing I forgot to do. I should have just deleted these keys because we don't need them. So once we've assigned the value to team, we, we don't actually need the Western Conference and Eastern Conference columns. They're just unnecessary. So you can see here now we have a column called team, we have the year, and then we have the win-loss record for each year. So we've now parsed all of the team HTML files from 1991 to 2021, and we've put it into a single data frame. Amazing. So now let's just write this to CSV as well. And run that. All right, so we've come really far in this, in this uh, web scraping tutorial. So we now have CSV files, one that contains the MVPs for each season and the voting from 1991 to 2021. We have one for the players, and we have one for the teams. And this is actually exactly what we need to do to go ahead and, and apply machine learning in the next step. All right, I think I made a small mistake with the decompose. When we look at teams, we'll see that we still have the central division label. So I think I did not fully remove those. So let's go ahead and take a look. Always good to check your work. All right, TR class T head decompose, interesting. Okay, well, we'll have to solve that when we do data cleaning next time we prepare this data for machine learning. All right, so continuing with the summary, we now have CSV files for, for MVPs, players, and teams. We now also have all of the HTML files if we wanna go back and, and process them in a different way. And we've learned a lot. So we've gone through how to do web scraping with the request library how to parse it with beautiful soup, and then how to load it into pandas. We've also covered how to use Selenium in cases where we need to do more advanced web scraping. So initializing the web driver, executing JavaScript, and getting the HTML that way. And then we've figured out how to combine all of our data into one pandas data frame and write it to CSV. So next time, we will cover how to use the data that we have scraped to go ahead and prepare for machine learning. So getting the right predictors and making sure that we are able to, to clean the data properly. So please join me next time for that and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.